Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you all once again to another Wednesday night Bible study. As many of you know, I'm sure we have recently started a brand new sermon series that we're doing every Sunday on uh, the Acts of the Holy Spirit, or as we've titled it, Holy Spirit, God in Us. And if you have not picked one of these up, I suggest uh, that you do. This is a magnet, and it has a list of everything that will be preached on on Sunday morning all the way up until September. So if you do not have one, I suggest that you pick these up. Uh, we have them at the front of the church. You can reach out to me if you're not worshiping with us in person right now, and I'll do my best to get you one. But if you do have one of these, there's something that you're going to notice. You will notice that there's a lot of passages that we're going to be going over from the book of Acts. And see, well, there's a reason for that. In the book of Acts, the apostles, they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, the apostles received the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, so this book of Acts that we read, it's the actions. It's the actions of the Holy Spirit through the apostles. Now, now with that being said, like if we got a whole book, 28 chapters that we can look at of the Holy Spirit working through the apostles. If we have a magnet that, that lists everything that will be preached on here on Sunday morning, then I want to challenge you. Every Sunday, come into worship prepared. If you're worshiping online, worship with us online prepared and not only for the scripture that will be preached that day, but prepare yourself in such a way that like, I know everything that's taken place up until this point we're at today. Like I'm familiar with the book of Acts. That's what I want. I want us all to be able to come together and be on point and see that it's such a way that it's like we have the book of Acts covered. When you hear Acts chapter 1, you don't only hear it, you see it. It's like you, you've crawled into that scripture like Pastor Clark says. You, you have it not only in here, but you have it up here as well. When, when someone looks at you and says, hey, tell me about Acts chapter 2. I would like for every one of you not to even have to open up the Bible. Now, I know that sounds really bad, but wouldn't it be nice to just be able to have a conversation with someone about Acts chapter 2 because, well, you know Acts chapter 2. You're familiar with Acts chapter 2. So, so what my plan is, and, and we'll see how this goes, but each week we are going to go over like the highlights of each chapter of the book of Acts and just continue to go forward so that we're all familiar with it. And you'll say to me, well, well, Ben, isn't that what we do on Sunday? To which I'll say to you, no, that's not exactly what we do on Sunday. See, there's never enough time. We don't have enough time on Sunday morning to go over everything in the book of Acts. There's not enough time uh, to go over it with uh, everything we have on, on Wednesday. So, so I encourage you, spend some time for yourself. Study the book of Acts. Get into it. Uh, be familiar with it. But here's how we're going to be begin. If someone were to come up and ask you, um, why do they call it the book of Acts? See, this is what you will say. They call it the book of Acts because it's the acts of the Holy Spirit. The acts of the Holy Spirit. And, and then moving on to the author. And, and I'll say, hey, Luke. Luke is the one who wrote Acts. And somebody will be like, well, we'll prove it. How do you know that, that Luke wrote Acts? And I'll say it's the first verse. Look, Acts 1, verse 1. It says, in my former book, Theophilus. So the first thing I read, I know that he's wrote a book before this. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. So let's... Try to find that former book. All right, it's Luke 1, verse 3, and obviously Luke wrote Luke, the Gospel of Luke. 
Luke 1, 3 goes like this. With this in mind, since I myself, the author speaking, Luke, have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decide to write an orderly account for you. Here's the name. Most excellent Theophilus. Here's the former book. Luke wrote the Gospel of Luke. Luke wrote the book of Acts. So if we just ended the lesson right here, and like this would be where I'd pick up next week, I'd say, hey, what did you learn this week? What did you learn that you're never going to forget? You would say, I learned that Acts, well, they call it that because it's the Acts of the Holy Spirit. I also learned that, you know what, Luke, not only did he write the Gospel of Luke, but he also wrote the book of Acts. And now I bet you're looking at me like, Ben, this is really boring. Like, like this is child stuff. And, and I say, or, or actually, no, Jesus says in Matthew 18, 3, he says, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. See, see we talked on Sunday. It's the simple gospel. We have to stop trying to, to overcomplicate things. Now, I would imagine that like 90% of you watching probably did know those two little brief things that I, I just went over. But this is what I believe. I believe there's someone in your life that doesn't know that. I believe there's someone in your life that doesn't know the Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Like the account of Jesus told by four different people. The account of Jesus told by four different people is just four different perspectives. Right? Then show them what we learned about Acts. That this is the Gospels, the account of Jesus, his death, his burial, his resurrection. Now here's the Acts of the apostles, the Holy Spirit through them. Teach that to someone and, and watch their face just be like, wow, that's what they'll do. You'll see their face light up and your heart will melt because it's like, I just tossed somebody some like sound biblical truth that they didn't know. I remember when someone taught me that and that's the face I made. Like, well, I've, I've never heard it like that. And I continue to teach this to people all the time, and that's what I continue to hear. Nobody's ever explained it like that. It, it's simple. Uh, now, here we go. So here's, we're going to look at what exactly happened in Acts 1. So by the time we're done, it's like, I know Acts chapter 1. So Jesus has been with the apostles for about 40 days. And then after his resurrection, and then he tells them that it's time for him to go and this is what the disciples say. Verse 6, Acts 1, 6. Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And, and Jesus said, hey, it's not for you to know the times or the date the Father has set by his authority. Verse 8, so powerful. But you will receive power. When? See, it hasn't came yet. So we know Acts chapter 1, the top half of it. They don't have the Holy Spirit yet. Jesus says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Watch this. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. And see, if I'm an apostle... If, if I'm listening to Jesus tell me this, I'm like, uh, hold up, Jesus. You better make sure you give us that Holy Spirit because first you want us to go to Jerusalem. Well, that's where they killed you. Right next you said uh, Judea. Okay, maybe I could see that. Samaria, a, a little stretch, but possible. But come on, Jesus. <laughs> the ends of the earth? Like, how are we supposed to get there? What about this whole uh, language barrier? How are we supposed to share the gospel with people that do not speak the same as us? You're probably one that going to want to give us that Holy Spirit. I want to show you this. This is uh, the first map that I have. 
I'm not sure how well you can see it on there, but what I have is you can see right down here is Jerusalem. Right? This is where Jesus said, I want you to take the gospel. You're going to take it. That's where they're at in Jerusalem. Next, make sure that, that it's going to be in, in Samaria and, and all of Judea. And like, if you look at that, it's like, that's a huge area. There, there's the apostles and the 120, but that seems really big. But then Jesus said, also, you're going to go to the very ends of the earth. Well, let's look at this map. See, this is really inspiring to me. I, I love maps, and, and I really hope it shows up well. If you, it doesn't, email me. I'll send you this map. But you see way down here, that's the area. Way down there at the bottom, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. And see, it gives me chills looking at that. See right here, this is Corinth. 1 Corinthians, we can read about it. This is Thessalonica, 1 Thessalonians. We can read about it. Philippi, the book of Philippians. We can read about it. Ephesus, Galatia, this is the ends of the earth that Jesus said you're going to spread the gospel there. And what I'm teaching you is we have a whole book of Acts to look at that shows them doing exactly that. So it's like, ben, how in the world did 12 apostles spread the gospel to all the ends of the earth. And it's like, no, hold up. I think there was only 11 because remember, remember what happened to Judas. He, he, he betrayed Jesus and then he felt bad. In Matthew 27, it tells us that Judas threw the money in the temple and he left. Then he went away and he hanged himself. But see, the bottom half of Acts chapter 1 the apostles, well, they pick a replacement for Judas. But, but it could not just be anyone. Watch Peter quote scripture as it was prophesied as the one who would betray Jesus. Acts verse 1, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 20. And like I said, I want you to picture this in, in your Bible if you're reading the longer. I just want you to see it. This is the bottom half of Acts 1. Top half, Jesus says, uh, you'll be my witnesses. In Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, you receive the Holy Spirit. He ascends up into heaven. Bottom half of Acts 1. Let's pick somebody to replace Judas. Here, like I said, and here's Peter quoting scripture. Acts 1 starting in verse 20. For said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms. May his place be deserted. See, it's just an amazing Bible. That's amazing. The, the Bible, like, like this is Psalms written hundreds of years before. And, and we knew that Judas was going to do this. It says, may his place be deserted. Let there be no one to dwell in it. And may another take his place of leadership. Verse 21, I always teach this. Therefore, right? anytime you see the word therefore, ask yourself, what's it there for? Well, because scripture says this, therefore we must do this is what Peter's saying. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time. The Lord Jesus was living among us. Pay attention to that. A man that's been with us the whole time, from the beginning of John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they nominated Two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and, and Matthias. So here's something else we learned really quickly is that obviously Justice and Matthias, they were with Jesus all the way up into the baptism and until his resurrection. We don't read about them much, in, or I don't know of anywhere we see them in the Gospels, but they said we have to pick someone that's been with us the whole time. Obviously Justice and Matthias were there. Verse 26 then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the 11 apostles. See, did you know that? Like Matthias is the person that took Judas's place. Very interesting, very simple to teach. 
So I believe now if I were to ask you, like, what's Acts 1 about? Tell me about Acts 1. You got it. Like, here's the stuff we, we just learned in Acts chapter 1. We know why it's called the book of Acts. It's the Acts of the Holy Spirit. We know who wrote it, right? Luke wrote it. Remember my former book, Theophilus. We saw that Jesus promises the disciples the Holy Spirit. And he tells them, go be my witnesses. Jesus ascends into heaven. And also we've learned in Acts chapter 1 that Matthias replaces Judas. And next week what I want to be able to do is be like, here's Acts 1. Remember, let's go over this real quick. Why is it called the book of Acts? Who wrote it? And we're going to learn all this together. Then we're going to move on to Acts chapter 2. And that's what we'll do right now in Acts chapter 2, or I'm sorry, in Acts chapter 1, Jesus promised that they would receive the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, that promise is fulfilled. Acts 2, starting in verse 1, when the day of Pentecost came, they, that's the apostles, were all together in one place. Stop right there. There's that word Pentecost. No idea what it means. So let's, let's find out what this word Pentecost means. Penta, that mean, means 50. And what this was, Pentecost was a celebration that took place 50 days after the Passover. Which, which in learning the book of Acts, how we're going through it, okay, this gives me a good time frame of where we're at. Because I learned in the Gospels that Jesus was crucified during Passover week. So now we're 50 days, just 50 days after the crucifixion. We've had the resurrection. Jesus is up in the heaven. Everybody's in the upper room just waiting on the Holy Spirit. Remember, Jesus promised them it happened. Watch Acts 2 verse 4. All of them were, and this is a huge word. See, the Holy Spirit doesn't just come upon them. All of them were filled, meaning the Holy Spirit indwells them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak, remember this, in other tongues as the Spirit enabled him. And, and see, now we see, oh, that Holy Spirit, that's going to help us get through this whole uh, language barrier. You know, Pastor Clark, he went over this. Remember, they, they accused him of, of being drunk. And Peter said, hey, these people, they're not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. Verse 16, no, this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And then Peter's going to get into it. We're not getting into it right now. But what he does is he uses Old Testament scripture things that they believe, and he shows them the prophecy of the coming Messiah. And also understand this. This is going to be the first time ever, the first time ever that Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection was preached. And it's our text that we just went over Sunday, Acts 2.36. Therefore, let all of Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And what I want you to understand on that, therefore, is like, here's all kinds of scripture to back up what I'm saying. Therefore, let all of Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Verse 37, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart, meaning they're convicted. And said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Verse 38, Peter replied, Repent. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And once again, something we talked about Sunday, 3,000 people. Remember we said they just kept up with the number of men. So at least 3,000 men, we're not counting women and children, accepted that message. Accepted the message and were baptized. 
And it's like, all right, so is that it? Man, that's, that's Acts chapter 2. The, the Holy Spirit comes on them. They speak in audible tongues. Uh, Peter preaches a message. No, it's not the end of it. One of my favorite verses in Scripture. See, it shows what people did after they received the message. It shows what, what we should do when we surrender to the message of Jesus. Acts 2.42, it says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Now think of this. What exactly was the apostles' teaching at that time? When Jesus died and he resurrected. There's a brand new life in him. But they devoted themselves to that. And the fellowship, we read in Scripture, that, that they would meet together in each other's houses to the breaking of bread, communion, and to prayer. The believers, they devoted themselves to these things. So now it's like, okay, Acts chapter 2. I believe we have that covered. Let's look at what we learned in Acts chapter 2. I know that Pentecost, well, well that was 50 days after Passover. And, and, and I know that that's the day that everybody was together. The 120 were together in, in the room, and the Holy Spirit, well, it came upon them. I know that they began to, to speak in other tongues so that they could reach all the different people that were there. I learned that Acts chapter 2 is the first time the gospel has ever been preached. And the first time the gospel was preached, 3,000 received the message and were baptized. And in Acts chapter 2, it also tells me that the ones who received that message, well, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. We should have Acts 1 down. We should have Acts 2 down. Next week, I just want to be able to look at this and say, hey, I'm going to go over this one more time because I want everybody to know where we're at. But what I've done for myself this week is I've not left that much time for Acts chapter 3. But we have to get into it. It's going to be really quick. We've got to get into Acts chapter 3 because if you've got your trusty magnet, you'll see this Sunday we're skipping Acts 3 and we're going into Acts 4. So I want everybody to be prepared of what we're going to get into for Sunday. So here comes Acts chapter 3. We'll do it quickly. Acts 3 starting in verse 1. And really, like I said, I've been teaching you all this, so I want us to be there. It's like this is the first of it. This is the start of it. 3,000 have been added to the number. You know, you'd think Peter and John, are, or Peter, John, and all the other apostles, they're just like on fire right now. You know, they've received the Holy Spirit. This is, their lives are different than they've ever been. And here's what happens. Acts 3, starting in verse 1. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple, I, I like this, this stuck out to me. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at the time of prayer, at three in the afternoon. See, what I noticed, it doesn't say they were going to the temple to pray. Now, now maybe they were, I do not know. But I do know that Jesus taught them that now they have straight access to the Father. You see, they, they don't have to go into the temple to speak to a priest, to try to get a priest to reach out to God. Now I've got straight access to the Father through Christ. So maybe they were going to pray, or maybe they're just going there to witness to some people because, hey, I can speak to Jesus one-on-one. -on -one. You guys, you don't have to be in here doing it like this. We can reach out to Christ ourselves. Anyways... Verse number two, now a man who was lame from birth was being, car being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. A couple of things I want you to pay attention to. Lame from birth and every day. He was at the temple courts. Someone took him to the temple courts. People dropped him off of the temple courts to beg. And, and, and I need to study it more. But in reading this, it made me wonder, did Jesus ever walk by this guy? Or did Jesus ever walk by him? Because it says that he's been lame from birth, and every day people brought him there to beg for money. 
See, I would imagine at some point, like Jesus walked by this temple as well. And maybe he's heard about his death and he's just sitting there and I'm hopeless. I heard about that Jesus. He was going around and he's causing these lame to walk and I have no hope now because he died. And in verse 3, it says, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he did what he did to ever asked what he did to everybody. He asked them for money. In verse 4, I bet this is different. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. And see, that probably rarely happened. You know, what, what usually would happen, I would imagine, if somebody was going to give the lame man that's there every day some money, it's just one of these, yeah, there you go. Well, here you go. Here's you some money. I'm not even paying attention to who you are. You're just sitting there begging. I don't want anything to do with you, but here's you some money. But Peter said, look at me. Look at us. Peter looked straight at him. Verse 5. So the man, watch this, so the man gave them his attention expecting to get something from them. It's like, oh man, you're looking right at me. I bet you're going to hook me up. You're going to give me more money than anybody else. Verse 6, then Peter said, silver, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. Oh, that's so powerful. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. Big word, instantly. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles, well, they became strong. Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give to you freely in the name of Jesus Christ. Here's the thing. You can, give, you can never give someone Jesus if you don't have Jesus. Peter had the Spirit of God living inside of him. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ, of who? I love how he says this, of Nazareth. Remember how people used to make fun of Jesus? Nothing good ever comes out of Nazareth. Peter says, in the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth. He says, rise and walk, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. Verse 8, he jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they, that's the people, Right. And they, the people, were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. And, and now I'm going to stop right there for tonight, and, and maybe uh, next week we'll finish up Acts chapter 3. But for sure, uh, come to church Sunday, worship with us online on Sunday, we're going to be in Acts chapter 4. Because it turns out that some of these uh, religious leaders... Well, they're getting pretty upset with, with Peter and the boys and this following they're getting ready to, to, to have after them and the miracles that they're doing and the teachings that they're presenting. But I really want all of us to uh, keep digging in to the book of Acts. I want us to learn it. I, I want us to know it. More importantly, I want us to be able to, to share it. And I know, like, in this lesson, there was not that much uh, spiritual application to not. It, it was more teaching. So let me close on this. The lame man at the gate, he wanted silver and gold. That's what he wanted. He wanted silver and gold. What he needed was to be able to walk. Find someone in your life that is not walking with Jesus. Teach them how to walk with him. Teach them why they need him. Because let's be honest, right? giving silver and gold, that's kind of like the easy way out. But that's just what most people want. Jesus, 
he's what all people need. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day that you've given us, God. I thank you for the Bible and how amazing it is. I thank you for the Holy Spirit and God that, that inspired these words that we read. I thank you for the Holy Spirit of God that lives inside of us. That it helps us to understand these things. God, let, us, let them not just, just roll off of our mind, God, but let them be uh, embedded into our hearts that, that we can uh, speak freely about the gospel to people and share the gospel with people and teach people, Lord, just some of these simple things of, of how the church started and the acts that the Holy Spirit did through these apostles, Lord. I pray that you be with everyone watching, God, that you continue to work in their lives, uh, that you continue to teach them scripture that they can apply in their lives. Lord, we love you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.